Hey guys, a couple videos back, I introduced you to my new Glock 43X and knew right away once I got this gun that I wanted to get a holster for it. And as I've mentioned on dozens of previous videos, I carry appendix and I carry a Kydex holster. So I wanted to try something a little bit different with the 43X. So I reached out to Galco and asked if I could look at one of their leather holsters and what they have sent me is the royal guard 2.0 inside the waistband holster um, this model number is rg 800 rb and basically it's for all the 43 models uh, whether it's 43 43x if you have the mos slide uh, it'll fit all of them so as you can see down here it's recommended to carry somewhere between the three and five o'clock position with this holster. I don't carry there. I carry appendix and I'm going to try this in the appendix position, but let's get this out of the package and then we'll go over all the features and details of it. So we have the holster itself and it looks like a uh, user manual. And that's about it. On one side of this is a lot of firearm safety information. And then the other side is kind of how to break in a new leather holster. Give you guys some close-ups here of this holster. Wish you guys could smell it. It's like walking into a leather shop. It smells so good pulling out of that package. This is made out of horse hide. And it's got the rough side out, as you can see, and the smooth side in. And that's going to really help with especially drawing of the pistol, but even reinserting it. You can see there it says horse hide. So horse hide is a uh, more impervious leather versus cow hide. Uh, impervious to like your body grease, oil, sweat, um, stuff like that. And so it will feel a little bit stiffer than a cowhide leather. Um, and it will soften, it will conform to your body like most leather holsters will, but not quite as much as what cowhide does. And one benefit to that is that it does keep your opening uh, to where it stays open. Some of the cowhide leather holsters, once you pull your gun out, this will collapse in and it's, it makes it kind of reholstering kind of difficult. And even though the majority of the holster is that uh, horsehide, I do believe that the belt loops here are cowhide. As you can see, if I'm holding the holster straight up and down, the loops are at an angle. And the reason for that is once this is on your belt, it'll actually give you a forward cant. I don't know the exact degree. I'm guessing probably somewhere between 15 to 20 degrees. Uh, it could be a little more than that. But what that forward cant does is it gets your grip, instead of your grip going down, toward your pant line past your belt it gets your grip coming upward a little bit which allows your hand to get to it much easier if you have to draw it and again that's really important if you are carrying in that three to five o'clock position you want to be able to easily get to the grip of your gun so a lot of leather holsters even inside the waistband basically they'll stop right where the mouth is on this side it'll stop and just come across here as well galco has basically added the sweat shield which should come pretty close to the end of the slide. I'll see once I get the gun in it, uh, but that just makes it more comfortable up against your body, prevents the gun from either rubbing on your shirt, rubbing on your stomach or side or whatever, uh, prevents your gun from rusting from your sweat hitting against the slide of your gun. So another feature that the Royal Guard 2.0 has is a metal reinforced mouth here. And basically again, that maintains the opening uh, so that when you go to reholster, you don't have to try to like pull your belt away to open this back up. It should maintain that without collapsing. I'm still just looking things over and just the overall quality of this is just amazing. The fit and finish, all of the rounded edges. You can just tell it's a really quality holster. All right, just so YouTube knows, I am working with the safe unloaded gun, no ammo anywhere around. So even though this holster was designed for the 43, 43X, 
It doesn't necessarily mean that it's a 100% custom fit. Again, this is leather. Um, so it may take some time for this to mold to it, to form to your body. But I'm just going to see how this fits right out of the box. See if we need to do anything with it. So let's put it in here. I got it seated all the way down in there. So some must for me is a holster has to cover the trigger guard area completely. I don't want a chance of a string getting in there or a piece of clothing or anything like that. And I cannot see any parts of that trigger. So, so far, yes, that covers it really well. Uh, another thing is a holster has to have really good retention. I like it to be adjustable retention, but it doesn't have to be as long as it's really good. Again, this is brand new right out. It should hold this, obviously, but I'm going to put my hand underneath just in case it doesn't. I'm going to hold right there. Shaking pretty good. I don't think it's really moving. Maybe a little bit it did. Let me see. No, it didn't move at all. So, yeah, I'm bouncing that thing around pretty good, and it is not moving out of there. Now, let's see how difficult it is to draw it out. Uh, that actually comes out pretty easily. I thought it might be tougher than that as well as that was holding. So it's going to look like, again, because it's leather, when I pull this out, it's going to look like there's marks on this probably. It's just kind of the leather wearing in, and this stuff will wipe right back off. So you don't have to really worry about uh, marks like uh, slide wear and stuff like that with leather holsters. I personally like a sweat shield that goes all the way up to the end of my slide. And this completely does none of that gun is going to be touching you at all. So I really like that feature. So yeah, you can see that if your 43 or 43 X was cut for an optic, there's plenty of room right there to fit that on there. And then another thing I noticed is that uh, down through here, it's got a really nice undercut. So again, you can easily get your fingers around there to get a full grip to pull out. So I can already tell one complaint that I'm going to have with this is leather does take a little bit of time to break in and it is really noisy while it's breaking in. Listen to this. So just imagine this being pressed up against your body and you know, your belt through here, you're going to have some noise. Uh, but I think after maybe a week or two, that'll probably go away. So I'll obviously show the holster while it's on me and I'll show some drawing and stuff like that here in a bit. Um, but I did want to show you guys just kind of how um, to put it on your belt. So I've shown my belt set up in previous videos, um, but basically like in the four o'clock position, um, you know, on my strong side, I keep a flashlight and I keep a multi-tool. And then at four on my other side, I keep my phone and I keep OC spray. So I find carrying appendix works well for me. It kind of balances out the belt a little bit. Um, and honestly, I think it's a little bit easier to get to your gun when it's in the appendix position. Now, most of my holsters just have a single metal clip on it and it goes right here. It's not fully at 12 o'clock. It's off just a little bit. Um, this having two straps, I'm probably not going to be able to fit it right there so i might have to put one on one side of the belt loop and one on the other side uh, but these just snap down they do have these uh belt loops available in i think three different sizes i think they have one and a quarter inches uh one and a half and 1.75 um i would probably just get the bigger ones like my belt's one and a half these are probably 1.75 and I'd rather have just a little bit of movement. That way when I'm sitting, walking, standing, there's a little bit of play that's still there. Uh, but the way you're going to do this is you can have your belt already on. Your pants can be on, everything. And these are just going to slide under the belt. And again, what's nice is that you can be getting out of your car and you're going in somewhere um, that you're not allowed to carry. And so you can just take this right off in the parking lot and not have to worry about it. But this will slide under. And as you can see, your pants are up through here. And then they're designed to actually snap from the bottom up. A lot of people struggle with these soft loops. But if, if you start it on the bottom and then you bring it up, then it snaps in place easily. 
So again, start at the bottom, bring it up. And then you'll see what part of this will be touching your body. So basically this is what's gonna be going up against you and a little bit of your grip here. And then you can see with that forward cant, how much room there is to be able to get your hand in there. You know, imagine lifting your shirt up. Again, I'll show you this in a bit, but the amount of room, um, sometimes when they're back like this, between your belt and the gun, there's very little room to get your fingers in there. But this, no trouble at all. So this here is something that I would wear on pretty much a normal day. It's a pair of jeans uh, and a polo shirt. I always have a t-shirt on underneath of it. And there is pretty much zero printing even in the appendix position. Um, again, it's designed to wear over here. Um, but if, if I pulled my shirt real tight, you can maybe see a little bit right there. Uh, but when you carry, it's best to wear loose fitting and darker shirts, but nothing at all. And as you can see, this is basically what it's gonna look like kind of in that appendix position. And what I'm going to do just for the camera is I'm actually going to take this shirt off just to be able to show you drawing and reholstering and stuff. Again, because of that forward cant of the holster and the loops, you can see how much room there is to be able to get your hand into that spot right there. And again, so really quick draws and that mouth stays open. So it makes reholstering very, very easy. So even though the mouth of this holster stays open when you draw your weapon out, I would still get in the habit of putting your thumb over your slide when you reholster. So I am going to wear this probably for a week or two. Um, if I find that this appendix position does not work, I will try to figure out something for my belt and move it around to the three or four o'clock position. I'll say right now, I've only had this thing on for 10 minutes and it is definitely more comfortable uh, than any Kydex holster that I've ever used in the appendix position. And this thing's not even broke in. And I'll quickly show you guys, like if you again, go to a government building or something and you can't take your gun, you just undo those, grab onto the whole thing, and it just slides right off your belt. You might have to go a notch tighter on your belt, maybe because you have pulled this thickness out, but it's pretty easy to do it when you get back to your car or whatever. You just slide it back in and redo your belt loops here. Okay, so I've carried the Royal Guard 2.0 for the past week. A couple of days during this time, it was for more than 12 hours. And so I want to share some of my thoughts on this holster. So let me start by saying that if a holster is not comfortable, you are likely to not wear it and therefore not have your gun with you. This Galco is without a doubt the most comfortable holster that I have ever worn. And I have had hundreds. And technically, they don't even tell you to wear it in the appendix position. It's supposed to be that three or four o'clock position or so. And, and even in the appendix, it was by far the most comfortable holster I've ever worn. It is super easy to draw your pistol out of the holster because of that forward cant. And then because of this undercut, it gives you all kinds of room to get to that grip. And again, super easy to slide out of that. And I probably spent an entire day basically just drawing and then reholstering, drawing and reholstering. Probably, I'm guessing at least 200 times I did that in a day just to kind of create a channel to where like literally you can just like just put a couple of fingers on here and the thing just slides right out um, and it still has the same retention as what it originally did and again those marks that you see are just from the leather and this stuff will just wipe right off and having to do with drawing your pistol reholstering it is also super easy uh, because of that wide mouth because of that reinforcement that's in there um, again even with your belt going through here and being kind of squeezed up against your body, the mouth still kind of maintains that and it's easy to put your pistol back in there then. The overall design of it offers really good concealment. I know the 43X is not the biggest pistol in the world, but it does have a 19 
a Glock 19 grip length to it. So the grip is kind of long and I didn't have any trouble concealing this at all. The materials that they use on this Royal Guard 2.0 really are top notch. Um, this horse hide, it, it probably should last 30 years. Even if you wore this every day, and that's probably a realistic number and, and it could last even longer than that. I like that it has this high sweat shield. So you don't have to worry about the slide of your pistol hitting up against your body and sweat and stuff like that, rusting out the slide. I like that it has these leather soft loops. Um, they do have these in a variety of colors. There's two or three colors available in them if you don't like the black ones. And then I mentioned they have different uh, lengths too for different belt sizes. But it really makes putting this on your belt and taking it off super quick and easy. You don't have to remove your belt or loosen your pants or any of that stuff. The one and only negative that I've found so far is that this holster still squeaks a lot. Um, when it's on you, especially when you're sitting and like your stomach's kind of pushed up against it. Just the slightest movement causes it to squeak like that. I don't notice it when I'm walking. And I think that with time, like I might need to put some leather conditioner on it. Um, and I do think that with my body sweat, eventually it's going to soften up. I mean, we're still in winter here and I'm not sweating really at all. Um, but it's just, it's just really noisy. So I would definitely consider this Galco a premium holster. And with anything premium comes a cost. At the time of recording, these are coming in at $212. And I know that is a lot of money, but this is something that's probably going to last you a lifetime. And it's going to be the most comfortable holster you probably have ever worn. The other thing with Galco is that they have about a two week uh, turnaround time. There's some other manufacturers that they might be a little bit cheaper. And then you look at it, their backlog is 40 weeks out. So, I mean, you're going almost a year waiting on a holster. This here, you can order it and probably have it in one or two weeks. And the quality is there. Down in the video description, I'm going to leave a video to the manufacturing process at Galco. It's like a tour. Uh, it's incredible to watch. It's like a 20 minute video. But if you guys have time, please watch that video. And you will see where they source like the horse hide and steer hide, the number of people, the, the process that it goes through to make one of these holsters is incredible. I mean, it, it's probably a 15 step process. I mean, it's, you just have to watch the video to appreciate it. Even all the way down to like the stitching, these are all like individual stitches. If something were to ever happen and this stitch right here were to get snagged or, or come out, that stitch is there by itself. It's not connected to the next stitch and then the next stitch. So the whole thing would not just like unravel or anything, but they show the process of like hand cutting all of the leather, polishing and buffing all the leather, painting the edges. And, and just, you just have to watch the video to appreciate how much work goes into making one of these holsters. So I don't think they sell the Royal Guard 2.0 on Amazon. Galco has other holsters on there, but not this one. So I'll leave a link I'm either down in the video description or I'll pin it as a comment down below if you want to find out more information on the Royal Guard 2.0. But if you guys found this video helpful or informative in any way, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. And that's going to be it on this one. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it.